Tennessee Williams is born Thomas Lanier Williams in 1911. Growing up in 1920s Mississippi gives him the knowledge to create the intimate detail needed for the setting of his plays, including music choice and themes of violence and passion. This reflects his own upbringing. As a child, he suffers a severe case of diphtheria, which confines him to the house for nearly a year and leaves him weak and sickly. Though he focuses on writing during this time, developing his craft, he is less robust than his father wants, and this builds enmity between them. At age 16, though, he wins his first writing award for an essay, and a year later he is published in a magazine for a short story, thus demonstrating his rapid acceleration in writing ability. Williams attends the University of Missouri for three years. Hoping to earn extra income, he enters poetry, essays, stories, and plays into various writing contests. At U of M, he joins the Alpha Tau Omega fraternity, but he doesn't fit in. His fraternity brothers find him to be shy and a socially backward loner who spends most of his time at the typewriter. During his junior year, his father pulls him out of school and forces him to work at a shoe company. Hating the monotony of a nine to five job, it drives him to write even more, and he sets a goal of writing one story per week. Only finding time on Saturday and Sunday, he often works late into the night. Because of this overwork and lack of any further success with his writing, by age 24, he suffers from a nervous breakdown and leaves his job. Memories of this period and of a particular co-worker inspire the character of Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire. By the mid-30s, his father's increasing alcoholism and abusive temper leads his mother to separate from him, again reflecting plot lines of Streetcar. Later, Williams enrolls in the University of Iowa where he continues to write plays and also win awards. He spends time with an amateur summer theater group in Memphis, Tennessee as well. The positive experience that he had while in Memphis led him to change his name and adopt Tennessee Williams as a professional name. The laughter enchanted me. Then and there the theater and I found each other for better and for worse. I know it's the only thing that saved my life, Tennessee Williams. Being homosexual, introverted, and fiercely determined and diligent, Williams' distinct and diverse character qualities paved the way to write personally. The early passion he had for literature, and the early disdain he had for his family, gave Williams plenty of food for thought in terms of writing content and style. Everything in his life is in his plays, and everything in his plays is in his life. Ilya Kassan Another of Williams' major plays is A Streetcar Named Desire. He publishes it in 1947. It takes place in New Orleans, home to Stella Kowalski, Nay Dubois, and her husband Stanley Kowalski. Stella is a calm, quiet, and patient woman who contrasts with her abusive husband. He is strong and tough, but becomes too physically intense as alcohol takes over his life. Stella's sister, Blanche Dubois is an aging upper-class woman, outgoing and flirtatious. She pays her sister a long-term visit, hoping to start a new life after losing her ancestral mansion, job, youth, and reputation in her hometown of Laurel, Mississippi. In the play, the three struggle to get along as Stella is torn between helping her sister and her husband. Other characters interact with these three and aid the story's development, such as Stanley's friend Mitch, who is a caregiver for his mother and also finds himself falling for Blanche. Mitch is a kind man whose gentleness stands out in the crowd of rough men that Stanley associates with. A Streetcar Named Desire is considered by many critics to be Tennessee Williams' greatest work. There is one other play that Tennessee Williams writes that really stands out. 
his personal favorite, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, is published in 1955 and wins the Pulitzer Prize for drama. It is set in the luxurious plantation home of Big Daddy Pollitt, a rich cotton tycoon who is dying of cancer in the fertile Mississippi Delta. The play examines the relationships between various members of the patriarch's family, primarily his son Brick and daughter-in-law Maggie. Big Daddy, a strict, bold, and abrasive self-made man, has just come home from the clinic on his 65th birthday in a joyous mood, having been given a clean bill of health. However, all of the family knows the truth. Big Mama and Big Daddy are unaware of the true diagnosis that Big Daddy is dying of cancer. The play revolves around the conflict of this family as the scene actually never leaves their home. A Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is later made into an incredible film starring Paul Newman as Brick, Elizabeth Taylor as Maggie, and Burl Ives as Big Daddy. In 1969, after a decade of extremely ill health, compounded by years of addiction to sleeping pills and liquor, Williams suffers a severe mental and physical breakdown, and he is hospitalized. In 1975, he releases his autobiography titled Memoirs, in which he shares many of his life struggles from birth to hospitalization. His struggles come to a dramatic close in 1983. The 71-year-old dies after choking on the cap of a bottle of eye drops. And there, one of America's greatest playwrights is found dead with a bottle of wine and prescription drugs laying by his side. 